Hello, I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the American Chemical Society Spring 2019 National Meeting in Orlando. We're joined today by Dr. Felix Hausch of the Technical University of Darmstadt. He's studying a key protein that could be targeted to help treat depression, obesity, and chronic pain. Dr. Hausch? Well, <clears throat> thank you, Laura. Um, well, we, um, colleagues, discovered a protein called FKBP51, for F, stands for FK56 binding protein 51, and this protein got raised our interest when it was discovered that mutations in this protein are associated with depression. And based on this interest, people, including us, started to look closer at it, <coughs> and it became clear that it also plays a role in chronic pain and in obesity. And this is why we started to <coughs> develop inhibitors for that, uh, recognizing it as, as a potential target. Please, next slide. And the main difficulty for that was that there's another protein called FKB52. It's like the twin protein of, this pr um, of our target, and it looks just the same. You see here the... The binding side, that's the part that we can, can target with a potential drug, and they look identi completely identical. Um, and um, this is so distinguishing these two proteins is important because they do opposite things. Now, um, things changed about four to five years ago when we, by serendipity, we discovered that our protein, 50, FK51, can change its, its shape. Next slide, please. And one amino acid that you see here in, in red flips out generates a novel cavity, which we now can fill with inhibitors, which you can see as a little blue stump there. And that led to a whole new series called the selective inhibitors of FKP51 that now distinguish 10,000 fold between those proteins, it's a complete new story, and since then this really becomes became a drug target. Um, next slide, please. So this protein is to a compound that we called SAFE2, we optimized to make it that it can be applied to mice as model systems, and that with that we teamed up with colleagues to test it for stress coping as a surrogate for depression, and um, for for fat burning as a surrogate for obesity, and also in a variety of, of animal models of, of pain. And in all these cases, we see effects that look beneficial. And one of the nice things in these. <coughs> Um, so this is a protein that really addresses a large medical need, which is really huge indications, as you probably all are aware. And one of the nice things is that the knockout mice themselves hardly show any f bad phenotype under basal conditions, suggesting that it might be a very safe uh, strategy to treat these diseases. Thank you, Dr. Hash. Are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Uh, Bill Abuslik, American Chemical Society. Uh, where is this prote uh, protein? Is it is it a structural protein? Is it, is it in a membrane? Is it is it circulating? Uh, and while normally, of course, I expect the proteins would be changing shapes and so uh, so forth, regardless of where they are. But what's uh, mm -hmm. since it's it's multifunctional, I'd like to know just just. Where is it? Absolutely. Well, it is in the cytosol, so inside, inside the cells, where it does a number of things that are still ongoing to be elucidated. One of the best characters function is that it's a, a co-chaperone um, or a helper protein for a major receptor called the glucocorticoid receptor, which is the main receptor for cortisol, a major stress hormone. And that's exactly, and there it, it dampens the sensitivity to, the, to this protein. So this is a molecular link to, to stress sensitivity, if you like, stress endocrinology. And um, that is a re a really a recurring theme that it plays a major role in, in stress biology. It's really robustly uh, induced by, by stress. That certainly play, plays an important role. It may actually be also a communic molecular link between these different diseases. You might have known th that um, obesity and depression and pain, they are highly comorbid the reason for which is unknown, but this could be one of it. Thank you. A question over here. Uh, 
I am Bob Service with Science. And um, can you just talk a little bit about, I mean, it sounds like the, this project has been going for a while. You've been uh, looking at the protein and different inhibitors for a while. So what are you reporting here that's new? That's Okay. Um, I'm here in two, two weeks, in two, two days from now, I'm the, my, my talk in the media session. Um, we are talking about how we discovered this induced fit, this new pocket, which is basically the, the intellectual breakthrough in the whole project. And um, in this, historically, we identified that by, by serendipity, as most these phenomena that you the pockets change. It's called confirmation selection or induced fit. Cryptic pockets, transient pockets, a number of names of it happens very often. Usually associated with a number of beneficial effects, like sele unprecedented selectivity, and in most of the cases, these have been discovered by chance, you know, by luck, including us. And the big question would be: Would there be any been, been any hint to discover this in a more systematical way? And we, using this as a model system, we observed, looked at it by NMR to detect this this transient p opening op opening even in the absence of the identifying ligand. So this is a new, new part. Okay. Katie Cottingham from ACS. So um, once you, you identify that hidden binding site, how did you design and test the inhibitors? Mm -hmm. um, well, <coughs> once, the, once you have a ligand, the first ligand that basically defines this new pocket, um, and you can crystallize it, and then basically the standard techniques of drug discovery work again. Yeah, so then we, we, we co-crystallized it, we saw, then actually we saw that it's a changed pocket, that there's room, and then we can, this little stump here, that's actually the, not a very good binder, but you, you see immediately you use space, you can fill that, and then immediately affinity rate improved dramatically. Yeah. Um, so that then quickly, pretty quick, to get to this safe H2 combo that is now went through all the animal models. And the big question now is to make this, convert this tool compound into a clinical candidate that can be applied to humans, which is a much, 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 much hard, tougher hurdle. And this protein is not a, not a very easy protein. It's really on the borderline what drug discovery or the medicine chemistry can do at the moment. And how many inhibitors do you have at this point? Well, and in terms of number candidates that yeah, we, we tested, yeah. mm -hmm. a couple of hundred, but um, what really <laughs> the, what really counts is the, yeah, the one, the, the number <laughs> one, <works>. right? <laughs> and can you share any preliminary results from the mouse alcoholism study that was mentioned in the press release? Mm -hmm. Well, that just was just approved um, as, as a manuscript, so I can talk about it. Um, Stress is very plays a high role, a strong role in, in alcohol dependence, uh, alcohol seeking. For some, it's believed that for some people, <laughs> taking alcohol is a stress relief thing, and so this is why people uh, we teamed up with colleagues who are specialized in the alcohol field, and <coughs> while the results are are a bit mixed, it's not that clear cut as we had hoped, which. Um, probably makes sense. It's a very complex phenotype. It's not just this protein be at, at work. Um, <coughs> but um, under some circumstances, we can um, um, reduce the, the reinstatement. So when you um, first make them mice alcohol dependent, and then you force them to to get sober again, an absent kind of, and then you offer them alcohol, alcohol again, that that's the special situation where they uh, under stress, when you then you stress uh, also stress them, which normally would en enhance the, the read statement of the alcohol seeking. This is, can be ameliorated, which completely makes sense in terms of the biology that we knew before. Any other questions? All right. If not, um, the archive version of this session will soon be posted at bitly slash ACS Live underscore Orlando 2019. Please join us for our next press conference at 1.30 p.m. today on liquid crystals that could help deflect laser pointer attacks on aircraft. Thank you.